Hi guys, what is love? You might have loads of things like running into your mind, you might be thinking about romantic love, you might be thinking about familial love, maybe the love you have for your parents, brothers, sisters. Um, it might be that you think about the love um, of um, people in communities where people join together and unite. And maybe that you think about God, the love of God. God is love. Um, but it's undeniable that this word love is a powerful word, it's a powerful concept and it, and it leads to us thinking of lots of examples of love and trying to pin down this question of what actually is love is a surprisingly tricky question but I want to turn to um, one of the most famous love verses in the Bible. So it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Um, it's that passage that's always read at weddings and I, I kind of want to read through the passage and just open up some ideas from it for us to reflect on and think about. So I'm just going to read it out. So this is 1 Corinthians 13. It says, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and I deliver up my body to be burned, but I have not love, I gain nothing. And then he goes on in verse four, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. What a powerful passage, what an inspirational passage. I just want to unpack some ideas from this. Um, so I want to kind of divide it into two, two sections. You've got this first section where Paul is talking about these amazing works, these amazing, impressive, incredible, by all means inspiring things that we could do, like speaking tongues of men or even of angels, having prophetic powers and having all knowledge and understanding all things and mysteries and having faith that moves mountains, miraculous faith, even giving away all his possessions and giving his very body to be burned, this act of martyrdom, yet if I have not love I am nothing. That's the first section, so it's like we've got this idea of all of these incredible impressive works. And then the second section he goes on to kind of characterise love, he gives some of the attributes or qualities of love. So he says patient, kind, does not envy, does not boast, is not arrogant, rude, doesn't insist on its own way, it's not irritable or resentful. It doesn't rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things. You've got these two sections. And in one sense, the first section, he's kind of telling us what love isn't. In the second section, he's telling us what love is. So it gives us this kind of full picture. Now, let's talk about this first section. Firstly, all of these incredible, impressive, inspiring works that make us go, wow. Yes, he says, even if I do all these things, yet have not love, I am nothing. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is um, people can do things like that and not have love. If Paul's teaching is to be taken as truth here, if Paul is teaching something true, what he's saying is we can do incredible, inspiring, wonderful works that make people go, wow, and they're amazing, and they impress churches, and they impress people, but you can do them without love. So just having those things in your life doesn't mean love is there. And that's a really um, kind of sobering warning in a sense that there can be all of these things. But I think this also very freeing. And this is a really cool thing because actually you can have love and not necessarily end up doing all these inspiring great things like speaking in the tongues of men or angels. You can still have love. You can have love and not have all prophecy and knowledge and wisdom. You can have love and not have this faith that moves mountains. You can have love and not give everything over and not give your body to be be burned. So it's possible to have love without all of these incredible, inspiring, impressive works. Um, so it, in a sense, it's, it's also very freeing. Um, it's a slightly sobering to know that like, it could be that you have all of these amazing things going on and you do all these impressive works that inspire people and, and get people following and get people talking and people, people are inspired and follow you yet you don't have love. So that's the kind of sobering side of it. But the freeing side of it is that actually if you do have love, 
It doesn't necessarily mean that you'll you'll do these amazing, wonderful, inspiring things that wow people over. And then in the second section, he goes on to characterise what love is. Now, what I find really interesting is when you compare the attributes um, the, of love in that second section with all of these incredible works and these like inspirational superlatives in the first section, there's a fundamental difference between the two. The kind of superlative, impressive, powerful works of the first section are things that are very public. People see it from a distance, people see it in churches. Now remember Paul was writing to a church in C Corinth, the Corinthian church, um, where there was a load of like inspiring spiritual miraculous stuff going on in the church. It was a bit of a show. It's quite impressive what was happening there. And those types of works, these kind of amazing faith works and incredible sacrificial works of charity and giving and so on, um, that we, we see in this first section, they're public, they can be seen from a distance. But what we see in the second section is Paul then expands and opens up what love is. Now, I don't think Paul gives us a, a specific concise definition of the word love. What he does instead is he paints a picture by looking at the attributes or characteristics of love. So he says, love is patient, love is kind, love it, it, it believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. This is a kind of set of characteristics. And these are private things. These are things that it's really the people who you're closest to, who you're most intimate with, the people who know you best, maybe even when you know yourself, like those, those kind of deep inner thoughts and processes, that's where the love is found. That's what Paul is saying. Um, so what we have in this second section is, as I say, it's not a, a concise definition of the word love. That's not what we need. What it is, is a set of characteristics or attributes or qualities that would be present in the life of someone who genuinely does have love. So we have this full picture. Don't get overwhelmed by all these amazing public works and presume that there's love there because they're, they're so impressive and inspiring because it's possible to have those things without love. On the other hand, if you do have love, then I think these natural, gentle, quiet, intimate characteristics emerge in your life, like patience, kindness, lack of envy, boasting and resentfulness or irritability, um, these kind of beautiful, patient qualities, um, this quality of believing and bearing and hoping all things, that sticking with and persisting with um, people through difficult times, through uncomfortable circumstances, through struggles, through through tension, through fallouts. Um, and I just think it's such a beautiful full picture when we take these two parts of this verse together. So I want to leave it there today. God bless you guys. Um, just continue to grow in love, continue to explore God, ask for God's love to be revealed to you and in you and through you. Amen. Bye guys and I will see you tomorrow.